Good evening, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. You're watching TCM, where tonight we've got a double feature commemorating the 110th anniversary of the start of World War I. To me, World War I is the most pointless war in modern history, and I realize the competition for that title is quite stiff. But if you factor in the staggering loss of life, more than 16 million people, and put it against the nearly non-existent stakes, you're left incalculably depressed. If you're a bit rusty on your early 20th century geopolitical history, fear not. We begin tonight with a documentary that will help make you the resident World War I expert at summer parties. From Universal in 1964, this is the TCM premiere of The Guns of August. The documentary is based on a Pulitzer Prize winning book published in 1962 by historian Barbara Tuckman. The film uses considerable archival footage to highlight the short-sighted, hubristic machinations of key players in Europe that led to the war. It goes on to tell the story of the conflict itself as the world got its first bitter taste of the horrors of modern warfare. In selecting a director for the picture, the producers went with a highly unconventional choice. Nathan Kroll was a Juilliard-trained violinist who'd worked as a jazz orchestra conductor, then a composer and conductor for radio and movies, before eventually finding his way to TV. Kroll directed a number of educational films for television focused exclusively on music and dance, capturing the work of luminaries like Pablo Casals, Yasha Heifetz, Joan Sutherland, Helen Hayes, and Martha Graham. Despite three Peabody Awards and an Emmy, little in Kroll's resume pegged him as a likely candidate to tackle a sober, big-screen dissection of the First World War. But that is exactly what he does here, cobbling together footage from government archives in Paris, London, Brussels, Berlin, and Washington, D.C. While Barbara Tuckman's book focuses exclusively on the events leading up to the war and the first battles, screenwriter Arthur Tortello's adaptation expanded the scope of the documentary to follow the war through the armistice in 1918. Universal signed on to distribute the picture as part of its recently launched New Horizons slate for up-and-coming filmmakers. From 1964, with narration by actor Fritz Weaver and a score by Saul Kaplan, The Guns of August. Historian Barbara Tuckman's seminal Pulitzer Prize winning World War I history book, The Guns of August, was groundbreaking for many reasons when published in 1962, not least because in the early 1960s, chronicling military history was a field dominated by men. Despite lacking an academic title or a graduate degree, Tuckman delved into the psychology of the naive European leaders who thought the war would be wrapped up in a matter of weeks, as well as arrogant generals who sacrificed an entire generation of men in service of that short-sightedness. Tuckman's innovation came from seeing her subjects not as historical pawns, but as people with ambitions and failings, and how those characteristics impacted millions and millions. Known for her accessible, engaging style, Tuckman published many more books on a range of historical topics, winning a second Pulitzer for 1971's Still Well in the American Experience in China. Coming up, an early Academy Award winner that portrays World War I from the perspective of German students who become quickly disabused of their romantic notions about the glories of war. Directed by Lewis Milestone in 1930, Lou Ayers stars in All Quiet on the Western Front. Next on TCM. Next on TCM, All Quiet on the Western Front, then across to Singapore, and later, The American Friend. TCM travels abroad tonight. 